you talk about Austria perhaps not being aggressive enough, Christian. Is that down to the players or is that on the manager? Again, I think we all were surprised by the lineup again. Mm -hmm. Alaba in a position where it also didn't work against North Macedonia in the first, first half. It was 1 1. Now you're 1 0 down. Second half reacting again. Alaba pushed on more forward. It happened then that there was more creative uh, up front. He had a great shot, and that's what's missing in this first half. And um, that was the biggest surprise to me. I mean, Alaba, though, by trade is a defender. You wanted to see him further up the field. Was that a risk you feel like the Austrians just weren't willing to take in this match? Well, he's a defender, yes. But uh, when you look at his, his time at Bayern Munich, very offensive defender mm -hmm. uh, with a great, great offensive ability. So, yes, I would like to see him in the national team pushed more forward, received the ball between the lines or received the ball from the defenders rather than being the one distributing the ball into the, to the midfield. Other side of things, Tim, how about the Dutch defence? We just saw images of Matthias De Ligt, a huge boost for this team. Well, they've been waiting for, it, for him to get back and be fit and he is the stalwart you know, in that defensive unit. Obviously, they've had to change the goalkeeper due to injury to Sillison, so he'll be the leader and the voice back there. What do you think the response will be back in Austria to this result? Disappointment, definitely. You also have to bear in mind you play in Amsterdam, so mm -hmm. it's a home game for the Netherlands. I think it comes down now to the last game against Ukraine, which mm. is kind of a final for the second spot in, in the group, and Austria will do everything to, to win this game. Mm. What's the ceiling here for the Dutch? They certainly improved after that first match. Well, they've improved. They, they, they show that they can create chances. Today, there was better defensively in terms of being resolute and seeing out the result. I like the fact that they're through now. They can rest players against North Macedonia, get people healthy for the knockout stages, and come back. Look, Dumfries has been fantastic today again, and, and Vinaldum and Depay gets on the score sheet. They look a real threat. It was a team that was under a lot of pressure before the tournament, and even after their opening win against Ukraine, where they blew a two-goal lead, there was more pressure on Frank De Boer. Are the questions answered now? I think they are. Uh, nevertheless, they left a lot of chances wasted. Mm -hmm. But the thing was they started strong, they finished the first half strong, and they finished the whole game strong, uh, having the 2-0. And they didn't look as vulnerable, Tim, as they did against Ukraine. No, and I think that, that, that was a bright spot for me. Getting the two-goal lead, I agree with Christian, they're leaving a lot of opportunities on the table. The good side to that is that they're actually creating them, but they didn't lose the lead, and they never looked like they were in danger of losing that lead. They felt comfortable and composed. They took the ball in tight spaces, even as Austria began to press it later in the second half. So... There's some good signs there for the Dutch team. Unfortunately, I have to agree with them. <laughs> but the problem was also that Austria never really tried to be a threat. And mm. they always played in front of the, the Netherlands defense, never really threatened with balls to turn, to turn the back three, back four. And this is not how you win games. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.